Okay, this video will explain how you winterize the trailer. Um, you don't want to have your water connected to the trailer. You want to just be running off your, um, your tank in the trailer. So first thing you want to do, make sure the heater, your water heater is turned off and your pump is turned on. Next thing you want to do is you want to bypass your hot water tank. And you do that with this switch right here. If you just turn it up, that bypasses your hot water tank. So just leave that up. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to hook up your, uh, this is the uh, winterizer stuff I use. It's just, just use anything that's pink and that's good for RV. If you go to your, um, if you go to your um, pump, there's this one hose here that's loose. It's just kind of looped out here like this. Um, right by that, right by that connection, there's a bypass here. You want to flip this up too, and that will bypass from your tank. Instead of your tank going into your system, it'll be this hose that goes into your system. So after you got that bypassed, and you um. That. Just take your hose here, take the end off of it, and you want to stick this down in your radiator antifreeze. I usually do it in a bucket just to, but you just stick it all the way down in the hose like that, just like that. And with that inserted, you go around all your fixtures and you turn them on and you run it until pink water comes through. You do your cold first. And once it starts turning pink, then you turn it over and you do your hot. And you do it till it starts turning pink. And as you see, your antifreeze is coming out of this tank. So you do your kitchen sink, you do your shower, hot and cold. You do your bathroom sink and you do your toilet. And on the toilet, you just open it up and let it run until it starts filling pink. There it is. One thing I do with the toilet well, I'll just show it to you. So when everything's pink, then your trailer's winterized. You can turn your pump off and you're good to go. The last thing you wanna do before you winterize is uh, you wanna drain your hot water tank. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, now that we got the inside of the trailer winterized, the last thing you wanna do is you wanna drain the hot water tank so that it doesn't freeze. You want it to stay empty during the winter. So the way you do that, again, we've bypassed the water on the inside. So there shouldn't be any water coming into the tank. We just need to drain what's in it. So if you go out to your hot water tank and just open the cover, you want to, you want to pull out this little anode rod that's down here at the bottom. And the, you pull that out with a one and one sixteenth socket. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. And when you first crack it open, be careful because the water tank will be under pressure. So you want to crack it open slowly until the pressure relieves itself and then you can and then you can take it out. So I'm gonna do that now. there it's draining the water this is a um, this is an anode rod this supposedly attracts the contaminants in the water and the, the theory is you probably know how this works but this thing will decay instead of your tank so 
I just replaced this this year. I'm going to show you the one. I kept the old one. This is the one that was originally in it. It's still got a lot of life on it, but decided to go ahead and replace it so you had a fresh anode rod. Um, you want to check this when you winterize every year. Check your rod and make sure it's in pretty good shape. When it starts wearing out, you want to replace it with a new one. So we're just going to let this tank drain. You can either leave this out or what I usually do is I just stick it back in the hole loose and that way I know where it is. So that's pretty much winterized there. You can um, now you can just let it sit winter and it won't worry about rust freezing out any. Okay, there is one other thing that I do when I winterize the tank that I forgot to tell you. Um, on your toilet, um, with it winterized, it's got this pink water in it. I don't like the pink water sitting in the toilet, so what I do is with the water pump turned off, I go ahead and drain the pink water out of the, out of the toilet. Let all the pink water go away, and then I I just pour some fresh water in it, and that way you don't have pink water sitting in your toilet. You want to make sure in your shower that you clean all the pink water out of the bottom. Um, I'm I've never let it happen. I don't know if it would stain it or not, but I don't like the pink water sitting in the shower, and I don't like it sitting in the toilet. So I always clean those out. Um, when I winterize and then that's um, Pretty sure that's it for winterizing now. I'll, I'll go through the steps to um, Unwinterize it or bring it back in service Okay to bring it back in service uh, Make sure your cap is on this hose. I just put it on hand tight You don't have to get it on any tighter than that because it really doesn't have any water pressure on it um, Cool it back up in the cabinet I mean, you want know, to take this, remember here's the lever that we bypassed our regular tank to this hose. So we want to turn it back to get water, fresh water from our regular tank. So we'll turn it down like that. Then we turn on our water pump here. Hot water tank, leave it turned off because it's drained. Remember, we got it drained. So then you want to go around all your faucets and you want to turn on the water and let it run until the pink water flushes out and you got clear water. You want to do your cold and your hot. You want to do your cold and your hot in the bathroom. Let them run clean. You want to see clear water on both hot and cold. Do your shower, hot and cold. Just let it run until it gets clear. Get all that pink stuff out of there. toilet. Let it run until there's no pink water. Oh, and one thing I forgot to um, show you when you winterize it, there is a faucet outside that I usually run pink water through as well. It's over here, it's underneath the um, spare tire. So you want to make sure you want to turn it on. Let all the pink water come out of that too. Let it run until there's no pink water. Okay, it's good and clear. Okay, so we've got we got all the water flushed out of all of our faucets. Now the only thing we need to do is um, seal back up the hot water tank. So to do that. I'm going to turn off the pump for now and I'm going to go back to the hot water tank 
and I'm going to turn this lever down and that'll allow water into the tank now. So now we'll go outside and we'll put that anode rod back on our hot water tank. Okay, here we are out at the tank. I'll put this down here. Sorry. Um, here's my rod. It's got a little bit of plumber's tape on it. That just kind of keeps it from leaking. Let's put it back in the hole. And start the threads on it. Make sure you start them by hand so you don't strip anything out. Once you get it going, you're going to tighten it down. Okay, it's on there tight. We'll put the slip cover back on. Okay. And then with that sealed back up, if you turn on your water pump and then turn on one of your hot water faucets, it'll start filling up the tank. It's a six gallon tank, so it takes a little bit of time to fill it up, but it's not bad. So we'll turn the pump on, leave the water heater off because it's not full of water yet. And then you want to turn on your faucets for your hot water. And that'll just let that run. Right now there's barely, barely any water running through it. Let it run until you get a full stream of water. And that way you know your hot water tank's full. And that's how you bring it back up in the service. This is how the faucet acts when it's filling up. You'll have pockets of air that's it's releasing out of the tank. But I can hear the water pump running and it's filling up. So just let it keep running until you get a good solid stream of water coming out. And then that means your tank's full and you can turn on your water heater again.